If statistics are to be believed, we wear 20% of our wardrobe 80% of the time. That's a lot of free riding clothes not earning their place. And in countries like mine, we are apparently buying 60% more clothes than we were 15 years ago, 60%. And the worst part is we're only keeping them for half the time we used to. <laughs> What's going wrong? <laughs> Why are we throwing so much of our wardrobe away? Because nobody seems to be having a good time here. Nothing's good about this situation when it comes to the planet, when it comes to the environment, but also when it comes to us. Why are we not enjoying this joyful process of wearing clothes on our finite bodies on a spinning rock hurtling through space? Well, I think there's about 10 answers to that question, but I've been having a sniff around one of them. I've been hearing about this thing called color analysis for a while, but it wasn't till I stumbled upon TikToks and Instagram reels like this that I started going from skeptical to curious. Seasonal color analysis is a technique that attempts to place individual coloring into tonal groups of winter, spring, summer, and autumn, and then loads of sub variants off that. So you can be a bright spring, a deep winter, a cool summer, a dark autumn, and about 12 to 14 variants in between. I can cite for myself that the reason I've got loads of old fast fashion purchases in the past is because I've got them home and I've realized they don't make me look right for some reason. There's, so there's something off. The lighting in the changing rooms make them look really nice. They look really nice on the model in the magazine or the symmetrical human in the website listing, but on me, something's going wrong. And I'll wear it a few times trying to convince myself that it's all in my head, but ultimately I ended up getting rid. Color analysis offers the potential of a method to that madness. Is there a way to work out what colors suit you? Is objectivity in color taste a oxymoron? Enquiring minds want to know. One of the aims on my channel is to talk more thoughtfully about ways we can see clothes and fashion moving in the future towards a slower consumption. But also the point of my channel is to have some fun and get curious. And I always like making videos that I would like to watch. And I am deeply nosy about whether color analysis works. So I pulled some pennies from the channel production budget and I hired a remote color specialist to tell me what the hell to wear. If you've ever wondered about color analysis or why your clothes don't suit you. Never fear, I am here in this video to find out whether they're onto something or it might be bullshit. So the first step of my colour analysis journey was picking somebody to do it. I picked Created Colourful. Um, they just had a really impressive website. Their Instagram presence was pretty good. And something that was important to me because I think it is quite a white space is that they were one of the only colour consultation places I could find that featured, not only featured people of colour, but actually hired them as well. So they have explicit pages on their website talking about that that and that impressed me they also had part of their form for pronouns so i was like okay let's go with these people so here are some of the questions they asked me they asked me about my ethnicity my age what my natural color of hair was apparently your diagnosis doesn't change if you dye your hair but it's good to know what your original hair color is so that was interesting and also my eye color which is a little bit hard to describe i would just say it's a warm brown but some people look at me and they tell me my eyes are ginger so that's interesting and also like if I burned or tanned, which I thought was an interesting differentiation. Here were my initial guesses at unflattering colors, red except an orangey red, cool tone tans, light green and pale pink. All of those colors I've noticed just haven't really suited me that much. They also asked if there was secretly a palette I hoped to be. And I kind of was just like, no, I don't care, but I would love to know if I can wear a red shade because I really love red. And a few other questions along the way, but the, to be honest, the questionnaire wasn't very long and there seemed to be an emphasis on the photos submitted. So let's go to the photos. Okay, I got my color consultation questionnaire through and this is where the homework begins. These are all the colors I need to take pictures of my face next to. There's a detailed video about all the things to do and not to do. It's kind of like a passport photo rule list, but more meticulous, to be honest. As requested, I'm not wearing any makeup because they don't want you to alter your skin tone or the way the camera captures your face. And I'm also not allowed to wear my glasses. So let's hope at least some of these are in focus. I went on a treasure hunt through my wardrobe. The only colour I couldn't really find, I have quite a colourful wardrobe, although I don't think I have every tone of colour, was cream because, as you might know, I'm allergic to white and cream because I have spillalacia. It's a disease that makes you spill anything you're trying to get in your mouth on your clothes. Please be tolerant. So I grabbed this old tote bag and I'm hoping that will suffice. If this comes out and tells me the cream is my colour, 
I don't know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take the pictures on my point and shoot because I've noticed that my phone camera comes up quite pink. I'm not really sure why. Let's go. Okay, so we're in the second part of the process now. They like the pics, but I did overperform and therefore fail in that they said do it near a window and I thought, I have a room full of windows, it's called a conservatory, I'll do them in a conservatory. No, no, no. They were very lovely and encouraging, but they were like, you're gonna need to take some more pictures. But a normal part of the process is taking more specific pictures anyway. So I have no less than 24 new colours to take pictures with, and this time they've got more specific. So not just red or blue, we've got tomato red, scarlet red, sky blue, teal, chocolate brown, camel. I don't think that's camel now I'm pointing at it, is it? <laughs> I don't know my fruits. Olive green was a bit of a panic for me. I'm hoping that one of these qualifies as olive green. Likewise yellows. In this pile, I'm hoping somewhere is saffron, canary yellow, and lemon yellow. Mm! Here's my floor of rainbow. Let's see how I get on. Now I'm currently at the stage of waiting for my results so I thought it'd be interesting to record what my predictions are. I have many questions about this process, mainly whether I'll actually agree with their findings. I find it really interesting thinking about how circumstance makes taste and how objectivity plays into that. For instance, do I like the colour purple and therefore like wearing it because I, I, I like looking down and seeing purple but it actually doesn't suit me? Or do I like purple because I wore it from an early age, something in my instinctive ancestral brain recognised that this was a good colour for me and then it started being one of my favourite colours? When I was taking the pictures for this experiment I honestly felt like I stopped being able to tell. I thought that it might clarify things as a non-expert looking at myself in this way but honestly Honestly, it made me feel like I was deeper in the woods about it. But nevertheless, here are my predictions. I think that olive will come up at some point. Some kind of greeny, olive, dark green, maybe. I also think that bright yellow, so not pastel yellow, and maybe not like a deep orange, but like a bright yellow. I recently got this green dress and it surprised me how much when I put it on, I was like, oh, zing, I think this is actually a good colour on me. It's not a colour I really own. I don't think there will be a grey in there because I don't feel like I've ever really worn a grey that I was like, yes. But if there is a grey, I think it's going to be like a deep, dark grey. If there is white in there, we're gonna have to revise everything we believe <laughs> because I fundamentally don't believe in owning white clothing from a sustainable perspective for myself. As somebody who is a cereal spillager, it seems not only annoying, but slightly inappropriate. If they tell me I don't suit black, we're gonna have some real issues <laughs> because that's half my wardrobe. And if they tell me that I don't suit red lipstick, that's gonna be awkward. A fundamental belief I've had about myself though is apart from the lipstick, I don't really feel like I suit red. Every time I put on red, I love looking at it, but I feel like I look a bit weird in it. So, but I love the red. So what I love from this experience is for them to tell me if there is a red that might suit me that I haven't found yet, or just like tell it to me straight dark. Red isn't for me, that's fine. I've also asked if they can tell me whether I should be wearing silver or gold jewellery and glasses. From a very young age, the age of six or seven, I was going into the opticians and they hold up that thing at your face that's like, silver or gold? And I was always like, I literally don't know. I honestly could look like a banshee in both. If I had to say, I think that I will probably be a summer or an autumn. I'd be very surprised if I was a winter or a spring. But what kind of summer or autumn? I don't know. That's why we got the experts in. We're just gonna have to wait and see. Okay, the results are in and I am a deep autumn. What does that mean? Who can say? Once I got my results, I realised that I didn't actually completely understand the difference within each season. So online I found this very helpful chart. So the two axes are high intensity, low intensity, warm undertone, cool undertone. Now it's really nice to have an answer 
finally that I do have a warm undertone because I have quite naturally pale skin and dark hair I was always taught going to the optician and various places like that that I would have a cool undertone various small observations throughout my life have led me to believe that maybe I have a warm undertone and it may seem petty but having a professional confirm that makes me feel a little bit calmer about my choices going forward it does however make me feel a little bit furious that I've spent some time building up a very nice silver jewelry collection <laughs> what do you think do I look better in silver or gold I think that the silver's still fine and also silver is usually way more in my price range so we're probably going to stick with silver for now with what I have but if I do decide in my mature and I'm sure financially rambunctious <laughs> mid and late 30s to invest in some gold jewellery then I shall. But what else is interesting about this diagram is that I am drawn to high intensity colours. So being told in bold writing that you will be flattered by colours with a hint of softness as opposed to very bright and neon type colours makes my heart a little sad and also a little bit defiant but we'll get into that later. Being a deep autumn from what I can tell means that I need to gravitate towards the colour colours that are warmer in tone without any blue undertones, more red undertones, and also colours that are as deep as possible. So like between this purple and this purple, we're going this purple. Explicitly, olive and moss over kelly or emerald green, deep cherry or maroon over cranberry, although who can really say what the difference between those two words are, teal or Perusian blue over sky or denim blue, goldenrod over lemon or greenish yellow, RIP my beautiful cardigan, okay sure. Now this is the devastating one, royal navy or dark chocolate over black. I was not expecting to be told that I didn't suit black and moreover I don't suit white that's not a loss for me but I do suit ivory so that's good to know and I can actually show you some footage of me in an ivory top what do you think I've literally never owned anything ivory before this is very scary for me pecan tan or mahogany over grey fabulous I'm on board I agree however this is the one that I I'm just I've just been thinking about it ever since I got the email deep eggplant over lavender or lilac now i understand there are some lilacs with blue in them but there's also this mid-tone purple that i absolutely love and would love to own some more of because i'm just drawn to it i've always been drawn to it drawn to it since i was a kid dark purple is nice but this purple i want to look at all the time i want to look at myself in it i just i love this color my best color mantras are apparently deep warm and earthy. The email goes into some detail. There's a little bit of fluff in it, if I'll, I'll be honest, but it is a long email. And according to my colorist, these are my knockout colors. Brown is something I have been gravitating towards getting a little bit more recently. So that's cool to know that that decision has been signed off by, I don't know, the color gods. But while they gave me a chart of colors to gravitate towards, they also gave me a chart of colors to avoid. And what we're seeing here, my friends, is not only a beautiful lilac tone, but um, this colour, <laughs> Billy, I actually really like myself in fuchsia and I've been looking at sistering seasons to see if maybe I, ha I have like some transitional tonage to me that the binary can be skewed and I can wear fuchsia, which I will anyway, but I, I just think that I do suit it and maybe I'm just an arrogant twat. You can tell me in the comments, I'm sure you will, but I really love this colour and if I look bad in it, I'm not even sure if I care, which brings me on to my general thoughts and learnings. Now this video isn't supposed to be like a thorough review of the very specific service that I used, but while we're here, I might as well say that I enjoyed the process that I had with this provider. I will say that from a cultural perspective, the emails were very American. <laughs> if that's the way of saying it. It was very full on. It was a little bit over familiar for me, but I guess that might be just a British thing. Samples from the emails include things like, hi Lena, oh my goodness, you are beautiful. I'm sure you hear this all the time, but your eyes are just to die for. They're such a rich, stunning shade of brown. <laughs> Their sparkle in these photos is so striking. It goes on, it goes on, your beautiful skin tone. Okay, it's, it's nice. It's genuinely lovely, but I also felt a little bit like, you know, the meme of like, oh, I'm fat and somebody else replies, oh no, you're not. You're you're beautiful and you're like I didn't say I was ugly <laughs> I kind of feel like this whole process is like wanting to know my colors isn't me saying that I feel insecure because all the correspondence I've received from them has been very affirming to the point where it's a bit like calm down but maybe that's that's also just like me um anyway apparently I'm stunning I have so many radiant features that draw my attention your gorgeous warm brown eyes are rich and dreamy <laughs> 
Stop it. They perfectly pair with your silky brown hair. Just, I just feel like maybe they're gonna murder me, you know, I don't know. <laughs> but you know, I, I should also probably just accept the compliment and move on. <laughs> anyway, pros of doing an online thing like this are, it was, I didn't have to leave my house. I could fit it into my day and I didn't need to live in a city near where one of these things are. The only ones I could find were in London and I frankly couldn't be bothered to go there. I don't live in London. So from that perspective, it made sense. It was also marginally cheaper than getting it done in person. And as this is, coming out of the production budget and are simply just an experiment. If, if there's a way I can do it in a more cost-effective way, that sounds good. However, drawbacks, while you can see on social media the difference in somebody's face on a screen, I'm not sure how possible it is to capture all the nuances of the human face when you're not in person. And it's also dependent on the quality of your camera and how it's calibrated. So there's that. There's also the fact that if you're somebody who doesn't know what colors suit them, you probably don't own all these very nuanced want specific shades of different colors. So instead of going in and somebody providing you with all of those drapage things for under your chin, having to get those from around your house and using duvets and blankets and the inside lining of jackets and stuff to try and find those colors was definitely a time consuming struggle and something that I think I have probably more clothes than most people. And I imagine that this would only be more difficult for somebody to find the specific colors you need to find a accurate match. And if I haven't found an accurate match this time, I, I would probably cite that as the reason. It also took a very long time for them to get back to me. You send your photos in and then there's a 30 day, day wait and then you send in your second batch of photos and there's another 30 day wait. So it's a bit different to just turning up on the day in person and, and getting it all done in one. And there's also the element of not really being able to ask too many questions. I felt that the email didn't really un, like teach me anything about the actual process. So I don't feel more equipped to like apply it as much as I thought I would. And I feel like when I've seen people do it in person, like my friend Hannah Whitson has recently done it in person, that sounded incredible. You should watch that video, I'll leave it below. Uh, she had it done in person and, and she got to ask a lot of questions and clarifying things. Whereas for this service, it would seem that it's $50 every time you wanna ask a question. <laughs> what can I say? Curiosity is expensive and I know it is somebody's time, but I think if it was like a more condensed amount of time with one specialist, you'd be able to properly utilize their time and your time and just be able to learn faster. So all of that said, I don't think I would recommend doing an online color analysis. Would I recommend doing a color analysis in general? I would say if you have recently had a clear out or you've recently come to a stage in your life where you would like to start investing in your wardrobe and buying pieces that last longer from more ethical brands, then I would say that it's probably worth it and it is gonna help you make more sustainable choices so that you can keep the stuff in your wardrobe for longer and you're not accidentally buying stuff that just for whatever instinctual reason you start to realize doesn't look good on you. But I also wonder if some of the work can't just be done for free by sitting down with yourself, draping colors over yourself, going into shops and trying things on and really taking some time to consider what actually looks good on you. I think this is something that as soon as somebody says, hey, you look really good in purple, then you just like absorb that and just will go forward in life thinking you look good in any purple and not really considering for yourself whether you like yourself in purple and if every purple works for you. I also think that it's good to emphasize color when we're choosing items we want to add to our wardrobe, hopefully, forever. I think if something is the right cut and the right size, especially when you're like in between sizes or I've been on the edge of plus size before and it's very hard to find clothes that really fit. I've got so excited by that, that I haven't really thought about the color that much and just bought the thing and ended up getting rid of it in a couple of years because color isn't just an addendum to what an item is, it is like a huge part of what the item is gonna do for you and, and your relationship to the, to the thing. Does that make sense? It did, however, bring up two other questions that I wasn't expecting to ask myself. The first is, is the aim of my long-term, lifelong wardrobe to wear colors I like to see or colors I like to be seen in? Because the person who's gonna see my wardrobe the most is me. And especially for dresses and bottoms and stuff like that, you're the person who's getting glimpses out of it, like out of the side of your eye. You're the person who is existing around these fabrics and these materials all day. And if you're wearing a color that you like looking at, or even if other people don't like looking at you in it, isn't that like as important? And if you feel comfortable in the color you're wearing, 
are you not gonna come across as brighter, more vibrant, more awake, more healthy, which is ultimately the goal of the color analysis ecosystem. And then the other question is, and this is something that I saw a few color specialists mention in videos, is while a color can look nice on you, it might be stealing the limelight from you and you need to be the main character <laughs> of your outfit. You need to be the protagonist of what you're wearing. And I started thinking, do I? <laughs> In the same way that I feel like dressing myself and making my own clothes or assembling outfits is an expression of who I am to a certain extent, however possible that ever is. It's also just a celebration of the thing, of the color, of the pattern, of the artist that designed it. And do I need to be the focus of that? Not always. I think the pressure of the viral idea of the color analysis is that we must look our best at all times. And of course, if there's a cheat sheet to doing that and you don't mind whether you're wearing periwinkle or sky blue, you like them both equally, of course choose the one that you're gonna look best in. But I went into this experiment wondering whether color analysis has a relationship to sustainability, having a wardrobe that is as friendly to the planet as it is to your brain. And I come back to the very embarrassingly obvious answer, which is, as always, joy. Even though I consensually, willingly went into this process and was excited for my results when I received them and I just saw these colors, I felt a bit sluggish. I felt a bit like, yeah, I own some of those colors, but do I wanna look at them every day? No, not really. Especially that tan. I don't wanna look at that. I don't really like any of the blues. <laughs> And that's fine. The color is not there to tell you exactly what to wear and say no, but it's like, if you want to look your best, wear these. But I just thought it's kind of like that whole eat, pray, love thing. It was like, I've been an architect of my own life, but now I'm in it. I'm not sure if I want it. And I felt like with the advice, I was like, thank you so much. This is very comprehensive and kind and good and thorough of you. But also I don't know if I want it. Keep it, it's yours. It's useful to know that the myth that everybody looks good in black is probably not true. And I think when it comes to making things from scratch and spending loads more time on stuff, I am going to put more emphasis on making things that are brown rather than black. Even though I've always hated white, I might experiment with ivory, which is an exciting part of my new fashion journey. I feel relieved that the cardigan I've just spent upwards of 30 hours making is probably in my color range. <laughs> Phew! But ultimately, I think the trend for color analysis points more towards a general human excitement for color as a thing, an anxiety about not looking our best all the time and really wanting to, but also just like allowing ourselves to sit down, quietly think about colour and knowing what we're about as much as that is ever possible. Like this woman, she's picked her lane. She knows what she's about. No colour analysis can come in and tell her not to wear lime green. It's over. The deed's been done and I respect that. The conclusion is that a climate friendly wardrobe, a wardrobe that is gonna last a lifetime, doesn't have to be a chore to assemble, doesn't have to be incredibly complicated. And while I don't regret doing this experiment, I do think that I overcomplicated in my head some of the things I already instinctively new. The facts remain that if we as people who participate in the fashion industry continue as business as usual, there'll be a 49% increase in climate impact from the fashion industry by 2030. That means 4.9 billion tonnes of CO2 and frankly, not a fan. So the more conversations we can have online about changing the way we think about our wardrobes, how we choose and circulate clothes is cool. And if colour analysis is part of that conversation, then I suppose it can stay. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you like this video, I bet you might like one of these videos. Over here, we've got some videos about changing your attitude towards your own wardrobe. And over here, we've got some videos about climate change and systemic resolutions for you to dive into here. This channel and all the free videos in it are made possible by The Gumption Club, who tip me per video to make sure these videos keep happening. I have been Lena Norms. You have been somebody who looks great today, by the way. That color really suits you. Frog snug out.